Thank you, Madam Chairman, and it's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. Um, I hope in the next, uh, about the next six or seven minutes, Madam Chairman, just to set out perhaps a contra view of the union, because um, it seems at times when we hear about uh, a debate like this, and I, and I must compliment uh, my honourable friend for bringing this debate forward. Other colleagues here will know that this is a subject close to my heart, and so something which I've given considerable thought to. Uh, you may think differently at the end of my speech, but um, I hope you will find it interesting nonetheless. But sometimes when we approach a subject like this, we take that, um, you, you, the old joke of a visitor coming to a rural area and asking directions and the farmer or whoever it is leaning on the gate says, well, if I were you, I wouldn't start from here. And I sometimes feel when we approach this, there is that, well, let's just disregard where we're at and let's start from some idealistic um, blank page or some other framework which doesn't exist in reality. But if we believe hard enough, if we screw our eyes up tight enough, we can imagine it is that way and we can start from there and a bright new dawn awaits us ahead. And I just don't think that's where we're at. So I'm afraid when I hear words like regularising, I immediately think of words like, you know, cookie cutter and wait your turn and stand in place because that big stamp which is coming along is going to get you as well and turn you into something, a movable piece which fits with the rest of the puzzle that's been created somewhere else. And I find instinctively that that doesn't um, fit with me. So what you're not going to hear from me now is a defence of the status quo. And um, also I would, I would make the point that this is not an exercise in, in party political point scoring, as, as members have avoided doing so far, and I commend them for that. But this is about exploring what does the union mean, what does its future hold, what role devolution might have to play in that. Because I actually hold an organic view of a union that um, has started and has developed uh, inevitably from things like our location in the world, the temperate climate we enjoy, our maritime nature and identity have all contributed to the nation that we are. We cannot ignore that, we should not, and we would not wish to. But the, the system of law which we have as well, again, an important part of our identity. Identity, there we are, our reputation for good or for ill around the world. How has that developed? The values that we hold, the Judeo-Christian principles which have been at the heart of so much of who we are as a nation. These things have shaped us. Inevitably then, this has dictated and shaped the relationships that we have formed around the globe. When Bill Gates came here a couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to ask him, why has he come to the UK government? And he said, very simply, because of your network of relationships around the globe. He recognised that history, that depth of contact and relationship that we had across the globe and the influence that came with it. <clears throat> and of course, from that then comes economy. The economy, we are the fifth largest economy, maybe the sixth largest economy in the world. And part of that is because of this network of relationships. Part of that, too, is driven by the internal relationships which we have forged and, forged and the transport links that have already been mentioned across all parts of our United Kingdom. And finally, of course, we then need to think about the future. So in terms of understanding ourselves as a union, what is it that we are moving towards? And that's an absolutely salient and current question, which again, I commend the member, my honourable friend, for bringing this forward, because it is exactly, I think, the question that we face now. Because that is, what are we now that we are a post-Brexit Britain? If we are no longer on a trajectory into a, a federalist, uh, liberal, social democracy um, in, within the EU, where are we heading? And I know some would say, oh, it's back to days of empire and colonial oppression, this kind of thing. I don't think it is. But the question is, what are we then heading to? So that's the union that I think of. And I think it's absolutely correct then to think, well, what does the future hold? Time doesn't allow me to, to perhaps develop these points um, at, 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 in the way that I would, I would wish, but I would make a couple of key points. And the first one is I would contrast the covenant that I think that holds us together with the contract that is presented in the form of devolution. The covenants that I think hold us together, those relationships built on shared dreams, shared ventures, shared losses, shared institutions that we've built upon the values we hold together, all of these things, that speaks to me of covenant and a vested interest in what every other part of the union is thinking, is feeling, is experiencing, is hoping. And I contrast that with what we did by devolution. Now, let me be clear, I fully support the democratic establishment of devolved um, assemblies and devolved parliaments across, across the UK. Uh, you won't find any, any um, uh, disagreement with me for what has been established democratically. 
But I think the biggest damage that has been done to our union was not in the creation of those institutions as much as convincing us that the relationship is now not a covenantal one, but a contractual one, a transactional one, which says, you now do these bits, you now make these, response, uh, these decisions on these policy areas, and we'll give you some money for it. And just as I wouldn't dream of trying to do that with my own marriage, trying to turn that covenant into a contract and a series of transactions, right, Robin, on a Monday you do the bins, and on a Wednesday I'll wash the dishes, that, that, it just doesn't work. And it's the same for our union. So these phrases like regularizing and a focus on a kind of technocratic design do chill me a bit because it doesn't capture the essence of who I think we are. Uh, Madam Chairman, I need to bring my remarks to a close. So I'll just say this, that when we start to look at how that contract operates, things like accountability, we do start to find flaws within it. Again, I'm a supporter of subsidiarity, this idea that decisions should be made as close to the local point of impact as possible. But we must not imagine that what we have done is perfect or even is replicable, should be replicable. There are deep problems which I don't have time to develop today. Madam Deputy Chairman, um, Madam Chairman uh, let me just finish with one, one analogy, if I may. We'll all be familiar with new housing estates, and very often in the middle of them is a green space. And when those houses go up and the green space is marked out, very quickly, brown lines, faint at first, start to appear, cutting across. There's actually a phrase for this. They're called desire lines. And almost always, it seems, they don't reflect the footpaths that have been in place. You know what I'm talking about, I'm sure, uh, Madam Chairman. It's where residents have decided that the shortest way from A to B is to walk across the, the green. And that is absolutely a metaphor for the way that the mistakes that we have made and the lessons we need to learn about how we think about our institutions and how we think about our union, I would suggest. Is that temptation to say, we can create a beautiful place. We can put down straight lines, maybe even curved, curved lines, which reflect what people want to do. And we would quickly find that people's actual desires, that organic response to the environment, that, that thrust of where ambition and hopes and dreams and relationships and ties takes them, cuts across it, creates those desire lines, not always in the place we design. I would urge caution in imagining that technocratic cleverness could take us to a better union and urge us to consider properly that organic model that we have that has grown, the covenant that holds us together, and I believe a bright future that holds us uh, ahead. Thank you, Madam Chairman.